Another free MIDI plugin included with this new version of Pro Tools is Riffer from Audio Modern. And here I've got PlaySell called up. An interesting sound. And I'm going to go under MIDI plugins under Audio Modern Riffer. Now, this is a really interesting kind of interface and plugin. The first thing to do is choose a key and scale. So in this case, I am in C. We choose the key up here. And then we choose the quality of the scale or mode that we want from here. And here, I think I'm just going to choose pentatonic neutral. Let's go for something pretty generic. Now, the idea is that we press the randomize button and it'll randomize pitch, duration, and velocity by default. So I'm going to click that and it's generated a pattern for me. Let me hit play. So it's kind of interesting and it's already conforming to the key. Let's randomize it again. So it's randomizing the duration. We can get to the duration parameters here and we can adjust the duration individually for each note if we want some of them to be shorter than others, like something like that. Or we can use this to just scale and offset the whole thing. Now, same thing with velocity. We can adjust the velocities for each note or adjust them all together to one value. And let me just randomize again. If you want to lock one of the parameters from being changed, all you need to do is select it. So for example, duration, maybe I'm going to shorten some of these. And I want to lock those and make sure I maintain the duration values. I'll hit the lock icon and now I'll randomize again. And you'll see that the notes in the background change, but not the durations. And same thing with velocity. We can optionally lock that. Now we have density, which is interesting. And that's what gives these repeats for each note. So we can have up to eight repeats, depending how high the stock goes for each of the notes. Now here, very high, it'll be kind of like a buzz. So there has to be a note happening on that event, of course, on that beat. So here with a small amount like that, you hear the individual repeats. But we can make it three, let's say, or four. Now I'm going to unlock the parameters here. And let's just generate another pattern. And let's go back to the note view here. We have some other functions where we can lock the note pitches for specific steps while still randomizing all the other underlying parameters, duration, density, and velocity. Okay, so, so let's say I like this beat and that beat. I wanna make sure those remain the same. What I can do is press this lock note button and just click there. We see that little green line and there and there. So I'm locking those three and now I'm gonna randomize again but those will remain the same. Do it again. So there I'm locking those notes. Now I'm gonna turn that off and another option is we can lock the entire step. So all the underlying parameters are also gonna be locked. For example, here I got this nice buzz there. Let me just lower that a bit. Okay, so I want to keep that. I'm just going to go back to pitch for a moment. I can lock the step. And now when I click here, we'll get that blue line. So I'm locking both of those and I'll randomize. And I've locked all the parameters for those steps. Now we can also click this keyboard icon to force notes to conform to the selected scale. Now they're already conforming, of course, because they were generated like that. But let's say I'm going to change this to regular pentatonic major. You'll see that those A sharps dropped down to A naturals. So let me unlock the step and you'll see if I put a G sharp there, pressing the keyboard icon will force it to conform to one of the pentatonic notes. Now we've got a tie notes function, which if I do that will link any repeated notes on the same pitch. And we also have sustain notes, which will randomly add longer sustains to some of the notes. And we have four independent riff generators. 
and the others are empty right now. We're still working with one, but let's continue to see how we can conform things and, and customize them. We have the shuffle to add an offset to add a swing value. So a bit of swing there. And we can change the playback direction with these arrows. So right now it's playing forward, but we can have it play backward from right to left. Or ping pong where it goes backward and forward and keeps alternating. Now we can adjust the number of steps in the loop length over here. So this is 16 steps and we can have it loop all 16, which is the default. But let's say I'm gonna have this only loop the first eight and I'll have it play forward. Now I can, of course, generate random patterns. But I can also limit the number of notes that'll be generated here with this over here. So I'm having eight steps. Let's say I put this down to six there'll be some spaces. Let's try that again. Let me turn off these functions and we'll try it again. So we can get nice sparser patterns that way. And again, if I make this loop longer, and you'll see as I drag there, this extends, we'll get even more spaces. Now here we can set the number of times we want to force the root note to repeat. And I'm just going to go into this lock step thing and unlock this step here. And let's just generate a new random pattern. So you can get them really sparse. Here, I'll increase the number here. Let's randomize again. We have a zoom bar on the left and a scroll bar on the right. And over here. So we can customize the display like that and let's hit randomize. And it also affects the range of the notes that'll be randomized. We can transpose by an octave or two octaves. And we can offset the steps, which is really interesting to change up the rhythms. So really a lot of fun. Here's a new pattern. Now we have an infinity mode here where we can force Riffer to generate a new pattern after a set number of loops. So let's say I set this to two and I put this on. So now it'll play through it twice, generate another one, play through it twice and so on. All right, here I've got a pattern that I like. And let's say I wanna save it. So I'm gonna click the preset browser here and I'm gonna name it EK01. And we have up to 16 slots that we can assign our presets to. So I'm gonna go back here and here's my EK01 and I'll assign this to slot one. So now it's populated slot one there and I can easily recall it. So let's go to slot two now and maybe I'll generate something else. Great, so I'm liking that. I'm gonna call this EK02, hit save. And now I can assign it freely to any of the slots that I want, but I'm gonna assign it to slot two. And here's my first one. Now we also have the ability to store different patterns in these different riffers. We can have up to four at the same time. So let me select this. Now we're hearing them both at the same time. And let's just limit this to fewer notes just to get a little bit more interesting results. Now I can click to turn them on and off individually. 
Now we're hearing none of them. And actually, it's not set to the right harmony. So let's just go back to pentatonic neutral and I'll force notes to conform. So we're hearing them both playing together and we can generate up to four. And here I'll set this one to the same one and generate a pattern here, but let's make it sparser just so it's not quite as busy. So again, we can turn them on and off individually and you can see them shaded out. And we have the all mode here where they'll all play together. So that's a little introduction to Riffer. There's a lot of fun to have here and you can always import presets and save as MIDI file to drag into your arrangement. So it's great for stimulating and generating ideas. We'll continue with more in the next video.